because that really helps me to let go of the anger. No longer do I really need to ruminate on uh, the confrontations that, I'm, that I have had. I don't get stuck on those anymore. And it feels great to be able to let those things go. It's a real relief. So the next time someone is creating, drawing you into an act of aggression, I hope recognizing how you feel in that moment is the step inward to the sacred pause and to recognizing and acknowledging how you feel. It's, it, it takes some practice, but it can get really automatic. It can get really quick. In this video, I'm going to be talking about something that affects every person in New York City. And that is confrontation, aggression. Some have called it mental violence, verbal violence, emotional violence. It's something that everybody encounters here, and it's so prevalent that it shapes the way that New Yorkers naturally interact. New Yorkers don't want to get involved with each other. They pretend to be afraid of each other. They hold their tongue. They don't say anything. Everybody's afraid of each other or afraid to get involved. Uh, perhaps I'm making that up. So in this video, that's my dog with his new toy. It's impossible to take yourself seriously when you have this happening. Up. Oh. See him? Up, up, there we go. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. Go on, go play with your, go play with your hedgehog. <clears throat> so I've got some notes over here so that I'm gonna be referring to. So for the most part, this, this video is gonna be um, from memory or improvised. Um, I do have some things written down so that I get those clear, so that I have them organized. But hopefully this video is not going to be um, too incoherent or too uh, like rambling or whatever. So I'm going to first discuss what happened, the events, and then I'm going to discuss the kind of emotional story that I generated or the story that I created in my mind as a result of my emotional reaction to what was happening which is a human thing that happens instantly. Uh, and then I'm gonna take a deeper dive into the feelings that I had and then how I managed them using the RAIN construct from Tara Brock, which is something that has really helped me out in a lot of these kinds of situations or any situation where I'm, where I'm emotionally reactive and not able to therefore listen or speak from my higher self or my rational self, rain is a really great thing. And the reason I'm making this video, um, well, there are two reasons. The first is because it helps me to process emotionally what happened. It's very, it's very difficult for me to get into confrontations with people. I don't, I don't like aggression. I don't like violence. I do consider violence also to be mental and verbal and emotional as well as physical. It can be economic. It can be a lot of things. Um, I don't like violence, but violence, violence seems to come to me pretty easily. Aggression seems to come to me pretty easily. So it's something that I've had to learn to deal with skillfully because I spent 10 years, uh, just, you know, racking my brain, asking why and driving myself crazy about this, not understanding it. When I finally accepted that it was going to happen, I was able to really pause and take a step back and start to look for the tools to deal with it. And rain is one of the most powerful tools. It's my go-to that I, it's my default in times like these. So, which brings me to my second reason, you know, because this affects so many people in our culture, my hope is that this video will help someone who's having similar experiences. I wish that I had somebody 10, 15, 20 years ago when I was a minority in a black neighborhood getting aggressed on all the time, I wish that I had somebody at that time to tell me, uh, well, what's happening to you is partially in reality, partially in your mind, and your experience afterwards is 100% created in your mind through emotional reactivity, and you have a choice. I didn't think I had a choice, but we do. 
All right, enough pep talking. So here's what happened. So I was out walking my dog and we were passing the local hospital. And ahead of us, there was a black woman. She was about 35 years old, 220 pounds ish. Uh, she was in her pajamas. She was moving very slowly and she was holding on to her side. She had her hand on her side. And we got closer, kept coming up behind her. Uh, and once the dog was close to her, she suddenly noticed that the dog was behind her. So she turned around and looked at the dog and then she stopped walking and she, she looked at me and she stared hard at me. So I pulled the dog away from her and I went around. And as I went around, she said to me, adjacent to whiteness is not whiteness. And I, I went like this and said, what? And I'll explain why I did that. And then she repeated louder, adjacent to whiteness is not whiteness. I'm a human being, you gotta move the dog. And then she was saying this as she was walking into the hospital. So, and then I didn't say anything further, I walked away. And so those are the events. Maybe this kind of thing will sound familiar to you where someone says something that, that maybe you have some strong feelings about or they appear to have some strong feelings about and you have to walk away. You have to make the choice to either walk away and not engage that person or to engage that person and maybe escalate into a confrontation that goes beyond verbal, but who knows? So those are the, those are the events and here's the story that I'm creating in my mind about those events. I'd like you to remember those are two separate things. That's a skill that you need. So here's the story that I instantly created in my mind while the events were happening. The story that I created was that she's not feeling well or ill, maybe mentally volatile, and that she was upset, that she felt upset that I let my dog get close to her and that for her race was a factor in my disregard for the respect of her personal space. Also that she felt that she could dominate or humiliate me by calling me white or white adjacent and that furthermore she was going to teach me the most basic fundamental level of knowledge which is that human beings are above dogs and human beings deserve more consideration or respect than animals. And that I was not showing that respect or consideration to her. Also, I created, uh, also I created two stories which were crucial to my emotional reactivity or provoked my emotional reactivity or fed my emotional reactivity. And that was that uh, she was mentally disturbed and angry and that because she was angry, she wasn't going to be able to hear me no matter what I said. And also that she was seeing me as weak or weaker than her. This person also, I'm sorry, also I created the, the story that she was a black American, not an immigrant or not another kind of black person, for example, Caribbean. And that she was suffering either because of physical pain uh, or perhaps she was sick. And she's also suffering the emotional pain of being a black person with a history of trauma as an American in America. However you want to say that. Okay, so those are the stories. And when, when we react, when I react, I'll just say I and we interchangeably. Um, I know I don't speak for you, but... Um, if you don't, don't agree, then, you know, just kind of mark that in your mind for yourself. So, uh, I was so angry that I started to lose perspective. I, I kind of spun out, you could say. So, um, and the way that I, where I went when I spun out was my desire to defend myself or attack the other person. And my idea of how to attack her was to to show her that I was smarter than her and stronger than her and that she couldn't fuck with me. 
So I wanted to lecture her, you know, I wanted to, to like provoke her to draw her in, which is why I, which is why I went like this and said, what? To make this really big, like obnoxious display of, you know, uh, I dare you to say it louder, basically. Uh, that was a loss of control. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that again. Well, I don't know that I wouldn't do it again. I just, looking back at it, I recognize that in that moment, I'd lost control. I wanted to show her that I was more knowledgeable and smarter than she was and that she couldn't fuck with me and that she had underestimated me. And I started frantically searching my mind for all the quotes I could find from any black elder or any black scholar who eloquently deals with racism and white, white supremacy and should be known by every American, certainly every black American, people like John Henrik Clark and Neely Fuller. I was like digging deep to really put her in her place. But I managed to pause and to recognize how I was feeling. Recognizing is the most important thing for me. Like when, you rec when I recognize or acknowledge how I'm feeling, okay, I'm feeling really angry right now. I'm feeling also sad that this person is speaking to me like this. And it, I feel humiliated. I feel embarrassed or humiliated that this person is lecturing me like I'm a child talking down to me. Uh, that process of acknowledging my own feelings requires that I pause. Pausing is, you know, there's a reason that... This is all Tara Brock stuff. There's a reason Tara Brock calls the pause the sacred pause because it can get you out of a lot of shit. And most shit that I'm in, I create in my mind. <laughs> so recognizing or acknowledging how I, how I felt, that's the R in her system that she calls RAIN. R-A-I-N, recognize, acknowledge, investigate, and, nurture, and nourish or nurture. The recognizing or the, or the acknowledging of how I feel, understanding first that I was angry, and also recognizing that I was creating stories, that I was reacting emotionally and not rationally. That allowed me to put those feelings in perspective and I could start to see the events that were happening. Okay, this person is, is actually not uh, humiliating me. That's my feeling. That's my perception. This person is not lecturing me. That's what I'm saying is happening. What's happening is this person is saying these words over here and taking these actions over here and I'm putting these labels on it and I'm judging these labels. Lecturing me is bad. Talking down to me is bad. Uh, she's perceiving me as weaker. I don't want to be weak. Weak is weak is bad. I'm strong. She is wrong. I have to defend myself. I'm in the right. I can't back down. Let's shout her down. Let's let's go. You know wherever there is. Uh, and those are over here being created by my mind, unchecked by emotional, because of emotional reactivity. And meanwhile, the events are starting to become, starting to come in sharper, clearer perspective for me because I'm pausing, recognizing that all of that shit is happening. And honestly, even without allowing, even without the other steps of rain, allowing, investigating, and nurturing just recognizing would be enough for me to get me out of most situations to be able that means to be able to let go of somebody else's words or somebody else's actions to let go of my own attachment to being strong my own story about being weak my own interpretation of what's happening my own imagination of what's happening just recognizing would be enough so I hope that helps you the next time somebody is telling you that you're you know this or that or you're not treating them like a human being or the next time someone is creating drawing you into an act of aggression i hope recognizing how you feel in that moment is the step inward to the sacred pause and to recognizing and acknowledging how you feel it's it, it, it takes some practice, but it can get really automatic. It can get really quick. Like recognizing that I was angry and that I felt sad and felt weak, that felt in the moment like, like an older 
wiser person holding my hand, being there for me, saying, um, you're allowed to feel this way. Of course you feel this way, Kim. Like anybody in your position would feel this way. It's okay for you to feel like that, but your feelings, remember, are separate from the events. You don't have to get wrapped up in your feelings, reacting to the feelings as though you're reacting to the events. More on that later, but or not. <laughs> but uh, that's the second step of RAIN, allowing, you know, allowing your feelings, validating your feelings. That's necessary. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not an act of weakness. That's not a snowflake, unnecessary, soft, lib thing. You know, we all have intense feelings, especially in moments of confrontation, and to acknowledge them in that moment, to say to yourself that they are okay, is like a relief, you know? Like, I don't have to, like, stand my ground in that moment. I can walk away. I can let go of what's happening and what I'm feeling because it's natural that I have these feelings. It's okay that I have these feelings. And it takes practice. It takes, it takes a lot of, it takes, you know, time. You're not going to just automatically be like, okay, it's, a, you know, I acknowledge how I feel. I'm validating how I feel. You know, it's okay that I have these feelings. Anyone would feel this way. It's, you're not going to really like, you know, feel it. What is that blinking light on my camera? I have no idea what that is. What is that? Oh, I think it's telling me I don't have an SD card or maybe my SD card is like empty. I have no idea what that means. Maybe I should pause. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I'm just learning to use this camera and obviously I have no idea. And yeah, I know I'm rambling and not being concise and I'm probably not going to edit this video because I got to start putting out the things that I think are important for me to say that actually might help people and help me in the process rather than trying to make things better. Better is the enemy of good. And good is the enemy of good enough. All right, so anyway, where did we leave off? Okay, so uh, let me give you an example of what uh, the full experience of rain can look like. So recognize for me is the tool to use in the moment. It's what I default to a lot of times. Thank God it happens automatically. I just go to it unconsciously without thinking about it. Yay me! I'm going to take 15 seconds to ask you for a donation. If this video helps you, please say thank you by sending a donation using one of the links in the description. Your helping to support me financially makes an enormous difference to my morale and frees me up from doing other jobs so I can do this more. Thank you. Now on with the video. Uh, so recognize looks like, looks like this. I know I already said this. I'm going to say it again. Recognize looks like this. Uh, what feelings, what am I feeling right now? What feelings are there? I'm feeling really angry right now. I feel also, also humiliated. Uh, are there feelings underneath, like at the root of that humiliation? Like, can I chunk down into the, the most basic feelings that cause that humiliation that are behind or under or feeding that humiliation? The feeling is of being very small. Okay, how about further down than that? What's, what's the basis of small? What's under small? Sadness. What about under the sadness? Why is there sadness? What's at the basis of the sadness? It's fear of being weak, fear of not being wanted, fear of being less than someone else, or fear of being not good enough for the tribe. It feels, that fear feels like an innate fear, okay? Um, now, you don't, now you don't always have, now you don't always have the mental capacity to go through all those steps in the moment, but if you're determined to go a little deeper, like one layer deeper than the topmost emotions, in my case, anger and humiliation, then eventually you'll be able to get down one more layer, two more layers, three more layers. And, you know, practice, practice hones your weapon. Practice 
changes changes your mind, allows you to start doing these things. But your experience initially of recognizing it might be just like pausing, breathing to get into your body and saying, what am I feeling right now? One word. I always started with, I always would just start with one word in the past when I was really upset because I couldn't think any further than that. I could barely think. So it was like, okay, well, can I just identify one feeling? Can I put one word on how I'm feeling? Anger. And from there, once you have something, you have identified some way that you feel, you move on into allowing, acknowledging. You are feeling angry. I am feeling angry. And it's not bad or good. Bad and good are judgments. So you remove the judgment from what is from what you're actually feeling. You allow yourself by not judging. You allow yourself to feel. I'm feeling angry. I'm allowed to feel angry. And you can say some things to yourself to soothe yourself. This actually gets into the last step, which is nurturing. But you can do nurturing at any point along the RAIN process. The whole process actually does allow, is a process of recognizing and allowing and investigating and nurturing that's happening all simultaneously, but you can do one step very intentionally and that'll get you deeper into your emotional reactivity, into your ego, into your psyche, deeper down into your feelings, deeper connected with yourself. Am I rambling? Who's rambling? So allowing. Yeah, it sounds like something I say to myself in the moment is I'm feeling angry and I'm allowed to feel this way. It's okay that I feel this way. And sometimes I'm, if I'm really angry and really reactive and unable to listen and unable to think, I just repeat to myself, I'm allowed to feel this way. It's okay that I feel this way. And sometimes when people wanna be really persistent with, with their aggression with me, sometimes they'll say things like, like, uh, like you're scared, you know? And I'll say something like, um, something like, I'm allowed to feel scared. Of course I'm scared. And that puts an end to that. Okay, and then investigating. You move on to investigate. Now for me, investigation usually happens later, like when I'm in a safe space at home, when I have time to, to relax a little bit and I feel safe and I can start to calm down enough that I can think and hear. And investigation is usually the process that I described to you earlier. You know, what's, what's underneath that feeling of anger? What feelings are causing, might be causing or be the root cause of the anger? What feelings might be the root of the humiliation? You know, another way of saying that may be, what are the most basic feelings below humiliation? If humiliation is a type of sadness or a type of loneliness or a type of fear like describe the loneliness the sadness or the fear is there am i sad that another person didn't want me or saw me as weak am i afraid of being weak am i afraid of looking bad is this some prehistoric remnant of my brain of the human brain that wants to that wants me to identify my own weaknesses so that I can change them and therefore be of greater value to my community. Therefore, so my community doesn't abandon me or see me as a uh, dead weight or a liability. Is there some kind of thinking like that that's happening? Investigation. And then you also can investigate earlier experiences, you know, adverse childhood experiences or early experiences from your from previous experiences from your life in childhood or adulthood, which might have taught you or might have served as a as a starting point for you to believe that you constantly face judgment or that you're constantly vulnerable or exposed to aggression or violence, something that I'm constantly asking myself, not constantly, but thank God, but that I ask myself regularly during these things. What kind of experiences have I had that might have taught me this? You know, where's the feeling of humiliation and weakness coming from? Is that from, wh wh like, what is the earliest experience I can remember that was like that? Something on the playground with other kids, something with, a, with my brother or my sister? How about something that 
that my parents said or a way that they treated me or a way that they treated each other that reinforced my idea of weakness and humiliation and not being worthy and all that being kind of jumbled together into one big motherfucking knot. And then nurturing, you know, you, you are nurturing yourself when you go through the recognizing, allowing and investigating, but you can, you can nurture yourself even further than that. Like sometimes I need to ask people for feedback or I need to ask for help. So if something happens and I'm really, really upset, if I have a near death experience or I've, you know, been, you know, a relationship ends or I've lost a job or maybe I get a diagnosis, uh, if I perceive like some kind of threat to my safety or stability in one of those ways, I probably will make an appointment with uh, a counselor or a therapist or um, someone who is a professional who's trained to listen and give me feedback and guide me, hopefully giving me some tools to teach me how to guide myself through this experience. Maybe pointing out some things that I don't realize, pointing out some lessons that I need to continue to learn which for me is a lot of what life is all about. <laughs> uh, okay, you can probably tell I'm starting to feel, you know, safe now. Safe zone. Uh, okay, and then I might also ask a friend or my partner uh, or a loved one to listen to me. Uh, listen to this thing that just happened to me. I want to tell you about this. Do you have time to listen? Can, can you listen to me right now? Um, I need to be heard, you know, I have the need to share my experience, to say what it is that I have been through and to have that person hear me and then hopefully to also validate for me that I'm that I'm feeling what I'm feeling and it's okay that I'm feeling what I'm feeling and anyone in my position would feel this way, things like that. You know, that's that may seem kind of weak to some people like, oh, you need somebody else to tell you that your feelings are okay, to tell you your experience is okay. Yes, it helps. Uh, I might also need some perspective correction. This would look like someone saying, well, that person said adjacent to whiteness is not whiteness. But the part about it being a, a lecture to you or talking down to you or humiliating to you, that is your emotional reaction. Those are your thoughts, your story that you're creating. That is your responsibility and separate from what that person said. There is your story, there is the events, and there is your story about the events. And some, sometimes it's difficult for me to separate those. It's like the more emotionally reactive I am, the more I conflate them or combine them. Okay. I hope you get something out of this video. Uh, I plan to continue a confrontation series to continue making videos about the confrontations that I have or the aggression or the aggressed on experiences that I'm having out there. Um, you know, being aggressed on and being emotionally reactive and getting caught in my stories has at some points in my life al allowed me to develop prejudice against against whole groups of people. I've had prejudice against black people, against Koreans, against whites, against Asians, against Jews, against martial artists, against people who don't know how to fight. <laughs> I mean, is there anybody who I haven't who I haven't, you know, been prejudiced against at some time, you know, pointing the finger at like your group da 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 da. da. Uh, and um, it it just doesn't in in terms of the reactivity and the story and the emotional storm that, that all of that leads to, it's a cycle that is self-perpetuating. You know, the more I perceive threats or humiliation or aggression, the more I see aggression and threats and humiliation, the more I feel those things, the more I see them. It's like I'm unconsciously looking for them everywhere. And I know what you're thinking. You think you, you may be thinking that um, I go out like unconsciously looking or inviting um, aggression. But I do a lot of spiritual work around protecting myself from that and not looking for that and rooting it out and literally, literally banishing it from myself. And I also do a ton of like journaling. I get feedback from friends. I do, I do everything that I can to 
ask myself, am I inviting this aggression? Because sometimes I can invite it energetically, unconsciously. But I do a lot of work to self audit on that. So you may be right. It may be possible that I invited some of what happened today, that I invited this person's aggression. But uh, in this case, I don't, I don't think so. And I think I dealt with it, with it pretty well. But, it, but the most important thing to me is that I do that, that nurturing investigation and nurturing stage when I'm at home in a safe place uh, so that, because that really helps me to let go of the anger. You know, I don't, I don't, no longer do I really need to ruminate on uh, the confrontations that, I'm, that I have had something someone has said to me, or maybe it's not a confrontation, it's just something somebody said. Uh, I don't need to like, I don't get stuck on those anymore. And it feels great to be able to let those things go. It's a real relief. So I hope I hope this approach helps some of you. All right. Okay, take care.